So, welcome to the world of micro and smart systems. Uh, we have uh, four experts giving this presentation. I just give a brief highlight of my colleagues. My name is Professor K. N. Bhatt. I am from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Originally, I was a professor in IIT Madras and I retired from there and I come over to the I, to IASC uh, in 2006. Uh, my expertise is on devices and MEMS. Uh, this is the uh, fourth person here and other three people who are very important in this program are uh, Professor G. K. Anant Suresh. He is a professor in mechanical en engineering in the Institute of Science. He has a PhD from the University of Michigan and he was also an associate professor there. He has come back and he is now a full professor in the institute. He works on MEMS, a uh, lot of work on mechanical modeling, etcetera, he has done. So, he has hands on in this area very much and he will be giving uh, uh, a major number of lectures here. Professor K. J. Vinoy he is in the electrical communication engineering at IASC. He is a PhD from Penn State University. He has written a couple of books in the related area of MEMS along with the Professor Varadhan and uh, he has been here for about 5 or 6 years in the institute. He has been, he is an expert in RF MEMS, microwaves and also in technology. So, he will be giving talks on the technology related area whereas, Professor Anand Suresh will be giving, his presentation will deal with mechanics of solids. Professor Gopal Krishnan is in the aerospace engineering at IAC. He has a PhD from Purdue University and he is expert in, uh, in finite element methods. He has been teaching this course and also he is working using these MEMS devices for health monitoring. So, all in all you have uh, people giving this course who have been working in this area talking about this uh, topics. Okay. So, I welcome you to this particular program on these micro and smart systems. Mostly we may be dealing with the uh, MEMS area to start with and go on to the micro systems. The, we have five modules in this uh, uh, program and module 1 is uh, introduction. In fact, today is the first lecture on this uh, topic which I began. Uh, lecture 1 to 6 will cover the glimpses of microsystems, mainly introducing the topic to you people, to the audience here. Glimpses of microsystems, scaling effects, etcetera, miniaturization necessary, smart materials and systems, an overview, and then you have uh, microsensors, some examples we will be dealing with you in the third session. In the fourth session, we will have micro actuators, some examples, then uh, micro systems examples in uh, lecture 5, which I will be dealing. Then other three will be dealt by Gopal, Professor Gopal Krishnan and uh, Professor Anand Suresh. Lecture 6 on examples of smart systems and uh, Professor Gopal Krishnan will deal with that, which deals also with the health monitoring, the topic in which he is working very much. Module 2 is microfabrication processes. There are lecture 7 to lecture 14, Professor Vinoy from EC department will give all these lectures, which will deal with the bulk micro, micro machining, structure of silicon and other materials, wafer processing, various micro machining techniques and soft lithography, smart material processing, all those things he will be discussing. Then we have the module 3, which deals with the mechanics of solids. Lecture 15 to 24, this part will be uh, dealt with by Professor Gopal Krishnan of Aerospace Engineering, I am sorry, Professor Anand Suresh uh, from Mechanical Engineering Department. So, this will deal with the stressors, deformation, micro device suspension, residual stress, uh, Poisson effect all those dealing with the mechanics of solids and which will bring you 
up to date in that area which is required for doing any device uh, design for micro systems, micro mechanical systems. We have the module 4 on finite element methods which uh, Professor Gopal Krishnan from aerospace will deal, discuss. Here it will give you a complete exposure starting from fundamentals on the types of numerical methods for solving partial differential equations which are very important in any system in engineering. What are finite element method, what is the finite element method, variational principles, then the shape functions, these are the topics which will be dealt with. It may appear to be a bit complicated initially, but he has dealt it in such a nice way that everything will become very familiar to you and clear to you by the end of the program. Then the formulation of numerical integration, implementation of finite element method, all these things will be discussed in that module. Then the last module 5 will deal with electronics and packaging. Uh, I will deal most of the lectures here on semiconductor device basics, op amps and op amp circuits, signal conditioning for micro system devices these I will discuss. Then we will have integration of micro systems and micro electronics because after all when you need mechanical elements, mechanical devices, you have to deal with the real world, you need to convert those signals into uh, electrical signals which can be made useful to convey to deal with the external world. Then the packaging, it is not enough if you have the devices standing out there, you should have uh, uh, a system in which you can put together, package it suitable for the particular application. We will discuss also flip chip, ball grid etcetera and the reliability. Finally, the last two lectures will be case studies. One case study is on the pressure sensor. I will discuss that uh, dealing with the complete design processing and also packaging part of it. Uh, for various applications. Then case study 2 will be accelerometers, uh, Professor Anand Suresh will uh, have a, a nice presentation on that dealing with the various aspects of accelerometers including design and some of the applications etcetera. So, that is about the lecture modules. Now, the textbooks and reference books for this I have listed out here. One of the important uh, books or all the three are important. Uh, Professor Centuria, he has written a book on micro systems, this is not system, systems design, Clover Academic Publishers 2001. It actually has come in cheap edition some time back, it is just cost only about some 400 rupees or so, it is affordable for all of us. Thai Ran Su is the author, his book title is MEMS and Micro Systems Design and Manufacture. It is Macro Hill in uh, cheap edition, it is available, which is uh, just about 250 rupees. I am not trying to advertise that, but what I am trying to point out is it is affordable for all of us. One can buy it. Many of the interesting things, fundamentals have been discussed in that book. Another textbook which will be very useful will be uh, is authored by uh, Professor Varadhan, Professor Vinoy, and Professor Gopal Krishnan. Uh, Professor Vinoy and Gopal Christians will you will hear from them uh, subsequently in some of the lectures. So, they their book is on smart material systems and MEMS design and development methodologies It's a Wiley 2006. So, you can have your hands on on these books it will be uh, useful. Apart from that you can have several hyperlinks to which you can go and I am not going to read out this these are available in the websites. Additional reading if you want to do, there is a micro machine transducer source book by uh, Professor Kovacs from Stanford. It is a micro hill edition, it is uh, not available in cheap edition, but it deals with uh, various aspects of uh, transducers etcetera. It is a very well written book. And you can also take a look at micro sensors, principles and applications <coughs> authored by Gardner, Don Mary and Sons. 
The third one is a very famous book written by Meadow, Principles of Microfabrication, CRC Press published in 1998. Lot of technological details are given in that book. Uh, it is uh, a sort of Bible for many people to who want to follow the uh, technology. <coughs> So, we begin our uh, lecture 1 on micro smart systems and the title of this particular lecture is uh, glimpses of micro systems and miniaturization and uh, I am Professor K N Bhatt from the EC department IAC Bangalore. My email is knbhatt at gmail.com anytime you have any uh, doubts you can always send an email to me and uh, or any one of the speakers here. So, first we begin with uh, what are these microsystems and MEMS. MEMS is the uh, catch word today. Everyone talks of MEMS and all that is micro electromechanical systems and already talk has begun on NEMS which is nano electromechanical systems. So, these MEMS or micro electromechanical systems are devices that have static and movable components with some dimensions of in the scale of microns. If you want to talk of NEMS, those devices will have dimensions in the in the scale of nano. So, it depends upon your ability to shrink these device sizes to the nano. And the MEMS and the micro systems combine micro mechanics with micro electronics. You will have the mem mechanical components and devices along with the uh, along, along with the electronics micro electronics. If you want to like you can call NEMS with nano electronics. I am just putting out the, that term also because uh, that is catching up very much everywhere. Sometimes you can have these micro mechanics along with the micro optics. Then you will not call it as MEMS, you will call it as MOEMS, micro opto electromechanical systems. These uh, micro systems or MEMS are referred by different names in different countries. This is just to keep you informed that whatever name you by which you address it it is the same thing that you are talking. So, finally, what it matters what is there in the name? It is after all what matters is what you are dealing with. So, you call MEMS for this um, micro electromechanical systems in the United States in many parts of the world. You call it as micro systems technology MST in Europe. And if you talk to uh, colleagues in uh, professors of um, industries in Japan, they will address this as this as micro machines. And of course, we also have a term in India that is smart materials and smart structures. Okay. So, overall today more than talking about it as MEMS, people prefer to talk it talk about it as micro systems, because which will involve not only the micro mechanical systems, it will also include electronics and a complete system will be there with which uh, you can uh, deal with the entire uh, process or entire uh, activity. Now, these micro systems or micro electromechanical systems is actually a revolution which is similar to the VLSI in micro electronics. And as you know that the VLSI began with the, the single transistor in 1947 when it was invented by Bardeen, Brat, Bratin and uh, Shockley who won the Nobel Prize for transistors. At the time it was in large size single devices. Later on the miniaturization of those devices was possible and that was possible uh, in a big way. So, the integrated circuits came into picture and then integrated circuits in large scale, very large scale all these came into picture. They call it as VLSI. This has become omnipresent. 
the VLSI has become omnipresent in every walk of life, civilian, automobile, defense, everywhere it is used. And the cost has come down from year to year. That has been possible because of miniaturization. So, the revolution in VLSI has happened because of the ability to miniaturize. miniaturize okay. And this has been possible or this has been further possible because of the batch processing of the de devices. So, you could process, when I say batch processing, what is implied is you can, when you make one device or one process, you do that simultaneously on number of devices. To give an example, when I want to make one integrated circuit process, say like diffusion or oxidation, I can do it on number of wafers simultaneously on a single furnace. That is because in each load in the furnace, you can load 50 to 100 wafers simultaneously. And because of the process called photolithography, in each wafer there will be hundreds of devices. So, you can see that one go you process thousands of devices that is called batch processing. So, if you can think of, if you can use that process, batch processing and if you can do miniaturization, because that batch processing with photolithography enables you to do miniaturization. So, if you can adapt that to mechanical systems, nothing like that. You can make the mechanical devices smaller by miniaturization if it is possible. You can do the batch processing if you use some specific materials which you really use for integrated circuits that is the silicon. So, silicon is very popular has become very popular even with mechanical devices today. You will have subsequent lectures coming on that which will tell you how silicon is very powerful material for making, for making mechanical components like sensors, actuators, etcetera. And MEMS, it not only deals with miniaturization, batch processing of sensors, actuators and microstructures, it also should have the capability to integrate mechanical components with electronics. So, this is actually the marriage between the two systems completely. Two aspects to departments, so to say. You will have not only mechanical, you will have all the departments put together interacting with this particular uh, micro system activity. So, when today if you refer to VLSI, it is not merely very large scale integrated circuits, it is very large scale integration of department uh, activities, department streams, different, different streams. So, you will see that in this activity, not just not electrical or mechanical, you will have chemical, materials people, physics people, okay, uh, fluidics people, all systems, all uh, areas of people participating in that very actively. So, integration of mechanical components with electronics is a very important activity here. So, you can see that you can put all these things in very small package to form a micro system. What may occupy, if you recall the era of computers, if you go back to many of you youngsters would not have seen that, but when we were thinking of computers way back, a computer used to occupy the entire room and it was a big thing to even watch the computer from the window from outside. Today you have the computer in your palm top. The whole thing has been possible because you could reduce the entire system into a small package. So, if you can do the same thing for mechanical components, mechanical systems, you can have it on your palm top. You can have a micro pump on your fingertip with using this miniaturization system. I will highlight some of them today as we go on. So, the batch processing, what are things which makes it possible for you? The batch processing will enable uh, things like uh, uh, I, I, I hope you understand by now what is, what is batch processing is. The batch processing as it is evident from the BLSI enables you cost reduction, because in one process you are able to process number of devices. 
usually when you want to make a mechanical device, you may use a lathe or some other process to shape the shape the uh, material like steel or some other material. It has to be done one by one. But if I am using a material like silicon or similar material which can be used for batch processing, then with one process you get number of devices simultaneously. So, that leads to cost reduction. Okay. So, you can see the classical example of the memory that memory chips that you have. What was costing in terms of dollars earlier, now it has gone fractions of dollars, fractions of rupee, uh, one bit of a memory. So, you, your memory bit has become bigger and bigger, memory size has become bigger and bigger. It is available very cheap for you. Few years back, if you say uh, 500 MB, they will look up at it with awe. But today, even if you say several GB, then you wonder that is all what you have. So, that is the kind of development that has taken place because of cost reduction and batch processing. Further, the batch processing gives you reliability and, and reproducibility. What do you mean by that? When you take, when you are processing individual devices one by one, it is very difficult to have reproducibility. Even a minute change in the process will make changes in the properties of the device, functioning of the device to some extent. But if you are batch processing, what is happening is all the devices undergo the same treatment. As a result, all of them will perform identically and all of them are placed close by when integrate. So, performance is exactly same in all those cases. Reliability. So, once these sort of things are achieved, this reproducibility, it becomes highly reliable. Particularly when you make the size smaller and smaller, the chance of the flaw that is available in that portion of the material is reduced. If it is a bigger a larger area of the material, there is a ch good chance that there will be flaw in that in some parts of the material. So, the reliability of that particular device, which depends upon the entire volume of the large volume, will improve if I reduce and shrink the size of the device. So, and this is possible by the batch processing. Further to this advantages of this using this batch processing and miniaturization, we will talk of miniaturization. When you use, when you miniaturize the devices or the system, the consumption of power is low. Very good example is any actuator, if you make it, make it small, you do not need much power to make it move. For example, if you have a pump, a huge pump, you need large amount of power to run that. But if you have a very small pump, which can pump microliters of uh, fluid, you need very little power. So, very good example is that micro pump for low power operation. Similarly, there are several other, other examples which you can disc, uh, which we will see as you go on in the micro systems, where the power consumption will be reduced. And when the power consumption is reduced, you can use it anywhere in the remote areas. You can use, run it with the battery. If the power consumption is more, if you start running with the battery, you will, will run out of the battery very soon. Okay. So, that is the main advantage of that. And miniaturization allows you to use this for biomedical aerospace applications. You do not want to carry a big payload into your uh, uh, system when it uh, dealing with uh, uh, space vehicles, etcetera. So, you would like to reduce the size of the entire system, and miniaturization helps you to use it for aerospace applications. And also, biomedical applications, you will see soon why you need to miniaturize, miniaturize these devices for biomedical applications. For example, if I want to insert some device into your into the human body, you cannot afford to have a big size. It should be very, very small. A very good example of that I will illustrate with some uh, devices which should be inserted into the uh, into the head brain to monitor the pressure. 
Now, let us just take a quick look at uh, a comparison before I go into the details of the micro systems. Conventional micro machining and con silicon micro machining. I will talk of silicon because silicon is the one which is very popular in micro systems. No doubt other materials also are gaining popularity materials like polymer which are very much biocompatible are getting popularity. So, but when you want to really integrate electronics with the mechanical components one has to take a look at silicon related material devices and materials. Conventional micro machining techniques whatever I have said I have summarized it here each component must be made piece by piece. Low price for large production volumes are the result of mechanization. If because of mechanization automatic process uh, lathe etcetera you may be able to reduce the price to some extent, but otherwise it has to go through piece by piece. And some of the micro machining technique in conventional micro machining are ultrasonic machining, sand blasting to shape the uh, element material, laser ablation, spark erosion etcetera etc have aided in miniaturization. These are just most of them are not really batch processing. Okay. So, you will be able to do miniaturization with this up to certain limit. The finest details that can be machined are 1 to 2 orders of larger, larger than what is what you can do with photolithography using silicon. We may deal with several microns size, you may not be able to go to really to micron level. So, so, that is possible with silicon micro machining. Why I am I am harping on silicon is silicon is useful for making integrated circuits. Silicon is suitable for batch, of batch processing, well known processes are established. Why not we use it for realizing mechanical components? And you can use the processes similar to the fabrication of ICs, integrated circuits, that is that is very large scale integrated circuits. Then because of this batch processing, production costs of the whole production is independent of number of components fabricated. What I am implying by that is whether you make 100 devices or 1000 devices, the cost difference will not be much. So, more you make you gain your cost really goes down that way. So, making cost because they are batch processed at a time you make thousands of devices. So, the cost is drastically reduced because of that cost of the whole production is independent of number of components fabricated. You can it is miniaturization with finest details in the range 0.1 to 10 micrometers is possible based on photolithography. I will not deal with that today that will be deal dealt with by professor Vinoy in his lectures in the module number uh, 2 uh, on microfabrication processes. Okay. Now, <coughs> before we go any further, just a general classification of MEMS, when I say MEMS it is also micro systems, it can be classified as MEMS structures and devices, they can be classified as four major groups. Passive structures, for example, micro tips with the finest tip, which will be useful in several applications, including high frequency vacuum tubes, including uh, some of the atomic force microscopes that those passive structures like micro tips can be fabricated using in the MEMS process that is passive they are just structures. You can make microfluidic channels, very fine channels you can make for fluid flow in micro liters or nano liters that sort of thing you can do with this MEMS technology. How you do you will definitely see during the course of this 
these lectures. Then you can make mechanical components like sensors, which are which deal with pressure sensors, accelerometers, gyro and several other things, whatever gas sensors, all those which respond to the world, convert it to electrical signals. That can be realized with the MEMS technology or in the form of microsystems. Example of the sensor, pressure sensor. Actually, a survey says that about 60 percent of the market for microsystems or MEMS is pressure sensors. The remaining 40 are for all other sensors and other actuators. So, sensors convert mechanical signals into electrical or any other signal into electrical signal. Actuators reciprocal of signals uh, sensors which use information to influence something in the world. For example, a uh, micro pump or pump is a good example of actuator use electrical signal to run the pump convert it to mechanical energy. So, from electrical to the or whatever information you have convert it to mechanical energy mostly that is the actuator. Micro systems. So, we, we though we are calling this course as micro systems that has all these things passive sensor components, sensors, actuators, etcetera. Micro systems integrate both sensors, actuators, maybe passive structures uh, to provide some useful function. That means, it will also have electronics embedded into that. And in a micro system, you can have two approaches. One is the mechanical component. For example, let us say a micro pump. It is there as a one chip. In a small chip, it may be 2 to 3 millimeter size or couple of millimeter size. One cannot just uh, imagine one millimeter size pump. You are not talking of liters of fluid pumping being pumped. You are talking of microliters, nanoliters of fluid being pumped, mainly for biomedical applications. And in also in space applications, also they are useful. Okay. So, you can have a micro pump as a, as a separate chip. To drive this micro pump, you have you need electrical signal, and this electrical signal can come in a separate chip. And in a micro system, you may have this mechanical component and also the uh, electrical electronic circuit on separate chips housed under one umbrella. When I say umbrella, and one it is packaged in one package. So, from the outside world, you see the system which which can do which has electronics as well as mechanical component that is one way that is hybrid approach or if you do not like it if you want to make it even more compact you should have the ability to integrate mechanical component along with electronics in one chip in one process you must be able to realize both of them that is the ultimate. In fact, uh, in some one of those lectures in lecture number uh, 39, I will have the occasion to discuss with you uh, one of the approaches which has been realized at the university level in India on the integration of pressure sensor with electronics using uh, an approach called silicon on insulator approach. Insulator approach. We will have occasion to discuss that. You will have to wait till almost towards the end. Okay. So, that sort of micro system is the one that one really looks into ultimately. Though today, many of them are hybrid systems. Integrated systems are available commercially. The most popular one, one or the most famous one is the accelerometer fabricated by analog devices in, in the United States, which is used for uh, deploying airbag in the car. As you know, in the car, we do not need airbag here in the sense the speeds are not that high, but in highways etcetera in the United States where the speeds are very high, if for some reason there is some deceleration 
or some accident that happens. The first thing that would happen will be the people in the front seat will get affected, it could be fatal. The reason is because when you suddenly decelerate or you move forward and you are you get hit in the front. So, this airbag will deploy, it will trigger due to this acceleration or deceleration and it will just open a balloon, it will just come and hit against you, so that it will prevent you from falling forward. This is a classical example, example of a micro system in which the accelerometer is integrated on the same chip containing electronics to convert the acceleration into electrical signal and that electrical signal is used to actuate this uh, airbag or the balloon. That is a very good example of that. So, it was not very easy for analog devices to do it. There was, it was several years, almost a decade or more was spent in realizing that. So, the technology was not that, that well known to use the mechanical and electronics integrated together, but today it has become more, uh, it is more available for all of us to work on. Okay. So, now I think just again I will just see, this is just a summary of uh, what we have said, MEMS categories, structures, sensors, actuators use application, transportation, infrared images, pressure, acceleration, angular rate, all these are used and then aerodynamics, flow control, those are all transportation applications. Communications, you can see these micro systems or MEMS are useful everywhere. Communications, MEMS structures are RF signal guides, field emissionaries for vacuum tubes. You may wonder why this we are talking vacuum tubes. I will have uh, occasion to talk to you about that little bit. Uh, vacuum tube is coming back with vengeance because of its uh, high performance at high, high frequencies which are useful for several defense applications and biomedical applications. Acoustic sensors, displays, optical switches, RF switches all these come under communication if not in this lecture, in the next session I will talk some of those, I will touch upon some of those things. Analytical and medical, okay. micro channels, micro filters, mixers all those things are there under which are structures. Then sensors, gas sensors are there for medical applications or analytical applications. Actuators, micro pumps and micro valves, these are very good examples of that. Now, once again I am touching upon this topic, uh, the generally you can classify the sensors, actuators and structures, the BEMS and as I already pointed out, sensors, sensors convert measured quantities into electrical signal. To reiterate, pressure sensors, accelerometers, gyro, temperature sensor, gas sensor, flow sensor, all these come under this category and possibility of making them in micron size, at least some dimensions in microns. Miniaturization is possible with this MEMS technology. Actuators which convert different types of energy into mechanical energy, that is the correct definition of actuator. Micro pump, RF switches, resonators, micro mirror, okay, very small mirrors comb drives, all these are actuators and we will discuss some of those aspects also in the subsequent uh, lectures. Structures as I pointed out, AFM tip, field emission arrays, microfluidic channels. Field emission arrays are not, nothing but number of fine tips arranged together side by side, make use of in uh, electronics. Now, some examples of micro machined miniaturized mechanical components. I am just showing this in one slide to give a glimpse of some of these devices. For example, here you have just a three dimensional schematic of a pressure sensor. 
and here you have a photograph of the pressure sensor chip part of that shown here. The white what you see is the aluminum interconnection and there are 4 resistors located here 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the entire trick here is to realize some resistors 4 resistors on a membrane. For example, here you have got this block of silicon which you have shaped by removing the material from below using a technique called as bulk micro machining which Professor Benoit will discuss later to realize a membrane. The membrane thickness may be or it will be in the micron size 10 micron 20 micron of that order depending upon the pressure that you want to monitor or sense and on that membrane you will have these are the 1, 2, 3, 4 resistors located on the membrane and these resistors experience whatever stress the membrane will undergo when it is subjected to pressure. So, if it is put in an environment there is pressure you can the membrane senses the pressure and this stress experienced by the membrane is transferred on to this resistor whose resistance value will change and you monitor the change in the resistance of that resistors calibrate it to measure the or estimate the pressure. More of that will come later this is the idea and this entire size of this structure that I have shown here will be 1 to 2 millimeter size. You cannot afford to have that bigger if I want to use it for biomedical applications. Then okay, you have also I will go back to this thing go come back to this uh, subsequently you can have cantilever beams which are used for DNA detection. We will discuss that little later on these individual things. So, here a small molecule also can be detected if it sits on this cantilever. Cantilever is nothing but a beam it may be micro or nano structure which is anchored at this edge here onto uh, it is anchored at that portion. So, that only the beam is the one which moves up and down. So, if any molecule rests, uh, re goes and resides on that beam the beam should deflect. So, you should be able to measure that deflection you should be able to realize the beam which is such a small one which is possible by miniaturization and which is possible by the MEMS technology that is what we are just going to deal with that. So, in a system you will have this mechanical component plus the one which will convert that deflection into electrical signal micro system. This one what you see here is uh, the this red color here with the holes there is a plate which is or a structure which is supported by means of these 4 beams here which is also above the uh, above the ground level which is all these are uh, not which are hanging all these are anchored onto this 4 green pads anchored. So, this structure is entire structure is anchored on the 4 blue structures this is not green blue. Okay. So, they are anchored there. So, this system can move up and down like this. So, if there is acceleration in that direction this particular plate will move down or up depending upon the acceleration and this moves with respect to another plate. So, there will be change in the capacitance between this moving plate and the stationary substrate. If you sense that capacitance you can actually estimate or use that acceleration that is experienced by this uh, mass this you can call this as the mass because after all accelerometer contains a spring and a mass. Spring here is those these 4 beams which are holding that mass and this is the mass. So, the principle of that etcetera will discuss later not right today. Then this is what I show here. So, these two this is the example of the sensor these 3 are the sensors and the one that I am showing here is the actuator. You can see here on the thumb you have got the micro pump 
on schematic diagram I have shown here. So, this is the micro pump which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 layers which are bonded together. To realize the chamber of the beam, chamber of the micro pump which will allow the fluid to flow into this chamber through this valve when it opens and which will also let the fluid out of this when this valve opens and the ability to valve open this valve into and out is enabled by means of by applying voltage between this electrode and this electrode. When you apply voltage between these two electrodes, this membrane which is thin will deflect upwards due to electrostatic actuation, electrostatic force. After all, when you apply a, four, a voltage between two electrodes, there is a force of attraction between them. Normally, when you have a capacitor, the capacitor does not move because both are rigidly held. But here, you have got this plate, the bottom plate, which is very thin. So, if there is force of attraction between the top and bottom electrodes, that will deflect up, up the one thinner one will deflect up, increasing the volume of the chamber. That way, the pressure in the chamber will be reduced. When the pressure in the pressure is reduced, this wall will move up, so that this door is opened. And the fluid, if it is in contact with the fluid, the fluid will enter through this. Now, if you drop the voltage to 0, this membrane will come down, increasing the pressure inside, the fluid already has entered, then this wall will close, because this can go, cannot go down, but this can open outward, that will let the fluid outside. That is one stroke. In one stroke, you may be able to pump a fluid, which is may be nanoliter or microliter depending upon the chamber volume and the stroke volume. Stroke volume is the extent up to which membrane deflects. Okay. So, you can use these for those uh, for pumping fluid from one end to the other from a reservoir to a source region where you want pump. You can use it for biomedical applications where you can mount it on the finger and along if you have it have a uh, needle which is connected it, it can inject insulin to the body of the to the human body right away this is required because today in particularly in india we have a lot of people with diabetic who are diabetic therefore you can inject controlled quantities of insulin by using this microbiome if you have a sensor which senses the sugar level in the blood, okay, the system will include a sensor which will sense the fluid, the sugar level, and once the sugar level reaches some level, you will have a voltage. Uh, you will have a voltage generated. That voltage will actuate this pump, and that will let in this fluid out through that control quantity of fluid at that time when the sugar level comes up, and it is injected into the system through the micro through this needle. That is a micro system actually. We do not have it yet, but this is one goal of this uh, uh, micro system activity. Then there are I will also discuss not uh, uh, dwell upon this because there is something which I want to discuss, discuss the biomedical application of pressure sensor. Nano tip this I will bring in in my next le lecture on systems. We will go to this now. So, I will have just a brief discussion on this before we wind up uh, our dis discussion today. That is the why we should need the pressure sensor which is miniaturized. In Bangalore, we have this Nimhans, uh, okay, where lot of patients go after uh, to suffering from severe headache due to a tumor on the head or due to a head injury during an accident. I was told that at least 15 to 20 patients go to the man's to uh, the after a head injury in road accident. Now, the patient will have severe headache because the brain swells due to this head, inju head injury the headache as it develops and becomes more and more, ultimately the patient will go into a coma, coma. So, when the patient goes there, what they want to do is, they want to monitor the pressure in the brain. If the pressure builds up too much, they want to uh, siphon out some of the uh, 
fluid in the ventricle in the brain. So, this is actually the picture where you want to interact with the with this portion of the brain there that is invasive. What you have to do would be if you want to monitor the pressure, you want to have a pressure sensor, pressure sensor directly located inside here. How do you reach there? The only way you can reach there is drill a hole. You cannot drill a big hole into the brain. It has got to be a millimeter or maximum I was told about a millimeter and a half because after all entire operation is over that hole in the skull has to heal by itself. So, that has to be very small. So, if you want to make it invasive, you must have miniaturized pressure sensor whose size even after packaging, after packaging can be about a millimeter or a two. So, that has to be inserted into this. So, this is called intracranial pressure monitoring. You can do that by introducing that into this brain. And this pressure sensor when you insert, you can this is one of the things, this is available commercially abroad, but very expensive and you cannot afford to use them again and again, because once you insert into one human system, human body, you cannot reuse it, it has to be thrown out. So, you cannot afford to have several thousands of or few 30, 40 thousands of rupees for this. So, we are working on this, Professor Anand Suresh, myself and Professor Namakant, but we are working on developing a micro sensor, micro miniature pressure sensor for this application for biomedical application. It has been going on for some time now about few months. So, we have made some progress on that. The most important thing here is you cannot insert the uh, pressure sensor in the wafer form. You must have wire connections done to that and all these should be biocompatible. You must package them in the sense when you insert it, it is in a package form and the package cannot be a metallic package because a metallic package will be harmful to a person. So, you have the, you must use it biocompatible. So, that is one of the big activities here. You may have pressure sensor for different applications, but key thing to see is the, the chip may be of similar type but the package will be different from one device to one application to another application. This is the major difference between the package for integrated circuits and the package for the MEMS or microsystems. If you want to use this pressure sensor for application like measuring the mapping the pressure on the wing of a light combat, light combat aircraft, then you must have a flat package. If you want to use it for this intracranial pressure sensing, you must have a package which is biocompatible. If you want to use it for measuring the pressure, uh, use it with oceanography, okay, that is conductivity, temperature and depth measurement in the ocean, then the package must withstand that corrosive fluid of this liquid of the ocean. You can see what all challenges are there in this micro system packaging. Then the, you can use also for air pressure and flow in the ignition system of automobile, then you must have the device which should be capable of withstanding those temperatures which may exceed 100 degree centigrade. You can see the requirements are tremendous on the reliability, environment of, of operation, all these are very important. So, you have to take care of those things in the packaging and the device design, all those things are part and parcel of micro systems. Okay. I will uh, we'll have occasion to discuss about this structure of the pressure sensor, maybe I will bring in my next lecture. So, what I am trying to point out here is just I will skip some of these things if I come back. Micro systems need miniaturization to sum up. You need miniaturization for all the many applications, biomedical, pressure sensor, cantilever, etcetera need miniature, miniaturization. Aerospace, your application in pressure sensors and accelerometers. Space programs, pressure sensor, accelerometer, gyro, micro pump, all these are useful. You need micro pump in space applications because the gyro has a motor, it has a bearing. You need uh, uh, the lubrication for the bearing in very small quantities, you need a micro pump to deliver that. 
then for defense applications, explosive, de explosive detection, etc., you need many of these sensors. So, let me conclude with this uh, particular thing now and we will continue on more details of this microsystems uh, in subsequent lectures. Uh, I think next lecture will be given by Professor Anand Suresh on uh, smart materials and systems and overview will be the lecture number 2. Then after that we will have lecture number 3 on micro sensors and some examples and micro actuators. My lecture will be next will be on micro systems some examples I will touch upon the remaining things in my lecture in that lecture. Thank you very much. <laughs>